So I'm doing a little on location editing again. Just wanted to show you guys my, my mobile editing rig. And I uh, wanted to talk about some things about how I constructed it that are kind of interesting. So um, if you look at it, uh, this is a Thermaltake V21. It's a micro ATX case. Um, basically, I just kind of strung together some old parts. I had some uh, an old SSD. I had two uh, Western Digital Blacks that I put in RAID 0. And I had a GTX 690, which is obviously the most uh, interesting part here. I had an old uh, Thermaltake um, Big Typhoon that I threw on top of the uh, AMD 8350. And I uh, got about 16 gigs of RAM in here. So um, unfortunately, this case doesn't have a DVD drive, which is very important for me when I'm on the road. Also doesn't have a place for me to put a card reader. It would have been really nice to put a five and a quarter inch bay there. Um, I saw a couple of cases it had and I thought about returning that case and and uh, putting this in there. But this is what I ended up with. I found an old uh, uh, 20 inch monitor in a thrift store. Not the greatest monitor, but if it breaks on the way here, it's uh, not a big deal. So cheap keyboard and this Dell mouse. I really love these mice. Not only do they look cool, but they ju they just work really well. Got the Sennheiser headphones. Can't think about what those are. But uh and uh, I shipped it all here in this big tool case here. And uh so it fits that whole system. It fits the monitor, fits the uh, computer. Bought that from Lowe's for about 50 bucks. So um yeah, and it got here really safe. Nothing was messed up in the system. I packed it with a bunch of foam. Guess I'll show you the foam real quick <clears throat> that I packed it with. Let's see. Yeah, that kind of foam right there. So, yeah, packed it with that foam. And uh, so let's look at the performance here. Let's look at what it's doing on the screen. So, what, what really interested me about this build and why I'm making this video right now is that according to, um, let's see. Adobe's website, the GTX 690 is actually fully supported. And what they mean by fully supported is that it can use both of those uh, GPUs in there. So I wanted to kind of see that in action and see if it actually would use those uh, two GPUs to the fullest of their capabilities. So um, this is what's going on right here. So you can see um, the GTX 690 in there. It's on the 3.0 bus, even though obviously the 8350 only supports 2.0, PCIe 2.0. It's running at 16, the GPU clock, you can see the memory clock, all that kind of stuff. You can see how much memory it's got. Um, you can look at the sensors and you can see right now that, yeah, indeed, it is definitely taxing these GPUs a lot, that first GPU a lot. Um, it's using almost all of the VRAM. It's got a little bit reserved for the system. It's uh, using about a third of its overall power right now. The fans are spinning. It's really nice and quiet. The GPU temp is real low. Um, but right down here, let's move this up a little bit. Um, it actually gives you the option to see what the other GPU is doing. So let's see what the other GPU is so You see it shows you two GPUs down there. It's going to switch up, and it's going to load all of the uh, performance numbers for that second GPU. And it's using that second GPU just about as much as the first GPU. So um, that's really interesting. Let's go over here to hardware monitor and see what's going on here. So you can see that um, the 8350 is basically completely taxed here. It's completely taxed. Um, so actually the 8350 may be bottlenecking this GPU a little bit in terms of its rendering capabilities because what you would want to see is that GPU being used at 100% because that's where all of your rendering horsepower is coming from. Um, so I think my main system with the 16 cores and 32 threads and 64 gigs of RAM, um, I'm going to run another experiment to see how much of it it uses. But you can see that 84% of the memory is being used and both GPUs are being used at about a quarter of their power. Now, like I said, I'm not 100% sure that's because of a bottleneck on the CPU side. Um, I would bet that. Let's see if I've got any more uh, performance numbers here. This is what the Windows performance is saying. I'm using about 10 gigs of RAM. Uh, I've been up for three days, but yeah, you can see that CPU is getting taxed, buddy. 
Um, and, but the GPUs are using about a quarter. Both GPUs are using about somewhere around a quarter of their power. So I'm rendering four videos right now. They're just 720p videos. Um, you know, for my opinion, I, feel, I still feel like 720p is really the standard. Most of your TV shows are going to be in 720p. Even though you might have your big 4K TV, even most of your box is going to be 720p that you get from your cable company or whatever. Um, you know, most of your streaming is going to be 720p. Um, yeah, most people only really have bandwidth for, you guessed it, 720p. So I do a lot of my um, clients work in, in 720p because I just feel like not only that, it gets really easy to put all of that info on a... Uh, standard double layer DVD when I want to give them a final project. So, so yeah, this is what's going on with this computer. Um, I've had it for a while. I use it for gaming too um, when I'm not editing on the road with it. But I just wanted to show you that, yeah, in fact, um, Adobe can use dual GPU cards um, to their fullest capacity. Um, can't totally demonstrate that here, but I'm imagining if, if I had some CPUs that could really um, throw some frames at this thing, I'm imagining that that, that um, GPU usage would go up quite a bit, if not all the way to 100%. So I'll probably do another video to test this on my main rig. Um, unfortunately, I think this may be the only dual GPU card supported. Titan Z is probably supported too, but as far as that list goes, that's the only one I saw officially supported. Um, I mean, I'll probably try this on my 7990 and see what it, we'll see what happens as well. Um, obviously, CUDA and, and OpenCL are two completely different codecs, so we'll see what happens there. But yeah, just a very interesting little um, tidbit here that, hey, you know, you can score these GTX 690s for like 120 bucks on eBay. Like, you can get them real cheap. So uh, if you're interested in that, if you like doing video rendering, you know, for gaming, I mean, the GTX 690 is still legit. You know, you're not going to have any problems gaming with that. But uh, for video editing, hey, it still maybe have some life in it too. So thanks for watching. Like, sub, subscribe. Um, and yeah, watch some of the videos on the channel. Peace out.